Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berzetsky. everybody to another episode of Sharpen the Axe, our first for 2018. I'm Eric Lucero. And I'm Paul Berzeski, and I don't have a wireless mic today. Because <laughs> I gave my wireless mic to our very special guest. Yes, Miss Melissa Barrison. Yes. Melissa Barrison. <laughs> and very welcome. Thank you for joining us on Sharpen the Axe today. Thank you for having me. And uh, as you can see by this sparkly, sparkly instrument in her hand, she is a very, very rad violin player. <laughs> Now, uh, why don't you tell the folks at home a little bit about your, uh, your history, your playing history, who you've gone with. Yeah. I see you kicking around town all the time with all sorts of, uh, <laughs> yeah. all sorts of dudes. I'm all over the place. Yeah. I'm say I'm the hardest working musician. I don't know about that. I just stay busy. Um, but yeah, I'm classically trained, graduated from Point Loma Nazarene University, and um, got into the rock scene my freshman, sophomore year. I'm playing with all kinds of bands. Um, and you were telling me, uh, actually, we're, we're, for those who don't know, this show is based in San Diego, and uh, one of the bands I came up watching, uh, you played in Louis the Fourteenth here locally. Yeah, I which... got to sit in with some of their reunion shows, opening for CeeLo and uh, CeeLo That's Green right. and all kinds of stuff. But that was your start into rock, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, and uh, one of the lead singers from Louis branched off and started the Nervous Records. That's right, so. Brian Carsig. What's up, Brian? <laughs> yeah, hey, BK. <laughs> <laughs> And where'd you go from there? Who else have you played with? Oh, gosh. Um, I've played with a lot of local bands, everything from, uh, there's a Latin world beat reggae band called Todo Mundo. I toured with them for a little bit. Um, I've done some stuff with One Drop. I've done uh, Rodella's Machine, Donna's Trio, um, working with Shane Hall. um, Nice. And Marm Parcel. Gosh, Jesse LaMonica on the Dime Novels, uh, Wish in the Well, the list 
goes on and on. You, you <laughs> were with, <laughs> with, with Bandolier yeah. for a little while, yeah. which is the first time you were at our old studio, uh, a little bit down the down the way from here. Uh, uh, we used to have a show called ba uh, Radio Band Diego, which we're going to be bringing back here yes. probably pretty yes. shortly. Now that we have this like awesome live video streaming capabilities, we're yeah. gonna. Uh, so. I don't think they were around anymore, right? Bandolier. No, they, they were disbanded. rad, rad band. It was prog really rock. prog rock, prog very, rock yeah. band. Right but on. like, cla like classic prog rock, like very yes, like, yeah, I've, like oh. yes, and uh, yeah, mm, a little moodier than yes, more more Floydy. I would say oh, more, rad. Yeah, Floyd, Flo Floyd Wilco, Wilco kind of vibe. A lot of influence from Wilco for and, sure. And uh, right yeah, you used to shred with them on that <laughs> thing. It was awesome. That was fun. Super fun. Yeah, it's been quite the journey. <laughs> yeah, right on, and and uh, we, are you have? Do you have any regular gigs right now that you're going to go out and play or tour with? Um, right now, we're. I mean, it's January, so everyone's kind of like coming off the holidays, getting into recording mode. Um, so I just freelance a lot of corporate gigs. Um, I also play with San Diego City Ballet Orchestra. Okay, right uh, on. So I know we have a spring performance coming up. I'm not sure what that will be yet. Nice, right on. <laughs> So you, you uh, as well as live, you have been in studio before uh, yes. and have appeared on records. Mm -hmm. So um, to start there on the, uh, you know, this is a gear show. So uh, most of the time uh, in, in a studio, you're just running direct, going into the board, effects or everything comes during mixing. But uh, how about we take a look at your live rig if we could real quick. Oh, goodness, yes. So this is a do-it-yourself at home. I have always wanted a pedal board. Set up. So I went to Salvation Army and I got a laptop case, gutted it, and put in some pedals. I have my LR Bags DI um, because a lot of uh, problems with acoustic instruments, as mm -hmm. you know, is sometimes the pickups aren't strong enough, especially if you're playing with loud rock bands, to really cut through. And this allows me to not solely rely on the uh, sound guy. To that thing looks like it's been around the block a couple of times. Yeah, I actually got it from a cellist up in L.A. who works on, like, Family Guy and Titanic. He's done all those oh, soundtracks wow, right and on. stuff. So he's like, Melissa, you need this. So it's coming from a pro. Um, there was a slap missing, so I put in a, a power surge, and I've got my wireless setup, rechargeable batteries, mm -hmm. so I don't die during the middle of a solo. Um, my little TC electro electric um, Hoff for reverb, and then the flashback for some delay, and then my tuner, tuner, of course. Nice, right on. So you do have a straight, just go-to setup, uh, just reverb, delay, tuner yeah. to help you out and get right to it. I actually, yeah, this is my acoustic setup, and I'm going to reach in, because every once in a while, I will bust out this guy. Ooh, that's okay. It's my pog. Oh, there we go. Yeah, got to have the, pog. the octave pedal. <laughs> um, but yeah, at home I've got Wah Wah, and, you know, the Crybaby and nice. Distortion. And so uh, I don't, uh, at least from what I've uh, seen, there's not too many violin players out there using effects that I've seen, but is there a lot more than I really realize? Um, I'm sure, yeah. There's, there's a couple, uh, mostly in L.A., I feel like. Yeah. Um, I would love to find, if you're a violinist in San Diego and you use pedals and wireless and you rock out, please let me know. I want to make friends with you. Yeah. <laughs> we might some ins inspire yeah. some people on this show to go. Yeah. Yeah. True. And if you're a violinist looking for pedals, please come see me at Pitbull Audio. I'll help you out on that respect. Uh, which, so far, everything uh, that we've seen is stuff that is available at Pitbull Audio. Awesome. Uh, uh, just a say, yeah. quick question before sure, we dive yeah. into the toys. Uh, what you do play with uh, more classical type uh, orchestra ballet stuff? Do the players there tend to kind of think what this sort of thing is cool, or is it like you're you're, you're in the enemy camp with oh, those no. rock and rollers? <laughs> They're fascinated with They're their with their one pentatonic scale that they know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like me when I get into a mix of guitar players, and I'm like, "What's that? What do you do? How does that sound?" Mm -hmm. And then when I'm with the classical players who've never done this they're very intrigued and um have a lot of questions but they're a little scared of it they're not sure <laughs> well you're about to know the pain that i go through every episode we do this is when eric <laughs> brings a bunch of top top shelf toys yes <laughs> i try <laughs> yes. but uh I, actually but before i forget on one question uh so i mean usually live uh you want some reverb or delay most violinists might go to the sound guy what led to you actually going for your own board? Um, that's a good question. I guess not every sound, every sound guy is different, and I don't always get what I want. 
Um, so I like having the control. Um, also, with the combination of those pedals, I can I try to mimic a, a guitar. Okay. Um, so I, I'll play a lot of church gigs as well, mm -hmm. and they, they like to have that ambient, just like lots of delay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I like to control that on and off, and I can't really rely on the sound guy. You know, hey, this song at you know two minutes, can you <laughs> just boost my delay like crazy? I, you know, I'll just do oh. a foot switch. <laughs> or to come up with some elaborate hand signals like. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's hard to do when you got both hands occupied in that sense, yeah. right? Can't signal, so you want control. Yeah. Well, let's see what you think of these toys. See I if they end up in it. your uh, in your boy my, at all. Yeah, adding to my arsenal. So what do we got? So we're gonna start out with the TC Electronic, who makes your flashback and Hall of Fame that the you got. Fan. This is their pitch shifter uh, harmonizer, the Quintessence, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you who are listening have seen. It was a bit of big news when it came out. What's kind of cool about this, you can choose your key, your scale, so if you know your modes, you can get that deep on there. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Failed music major. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you sounded very intelligent saying modes, though. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like, I, I, this, this, I, dude, I, this dude modes. If I can just read the words on a page and imitate it back to make me look that much smarter, <laughs> that's a success to me. <laughs> uh, you can also choose, well, of course, you can choose your harmony from six below to six above. You got Ooh. three tone print if you're into that, uh, slots on there. And you got wet and dry mix. Do you ever okay. mess with harmonizers? Wait, you do. You have your uh, POG, POG that you it's sometimes really mess with. It's not really harmonizer. It's the octave. So True, yeah. I know I've heard, I've seen people do vocal harmonizers, and I'm fascinated by that. But. Yeah, the sister company of uh, TC Electronic, TC Helicon. And, yeah, people are doing some pretty in crazy, incredible things with those. Yeah. We'll have to bring those on one of these days. But uh, let's hear your dry real quick. This is no effects at all. <laughs> Now, actually, before, any key you want to pick? Um, let's do... What do you got? Is it every key? Uh, C, D, F, G, A, B. Let's do D. All right, let's do... I like the fourth below sound. D for Wait, that. is there no E key in there? Because <laughs> they figure <laughs> oh, that you're is. a guitar player going to be an E already. Oh, yeah, oh, there yeah. Is, there's E right, yeah, right there. <laughs> and let's do... Let's see what's down here. So let's, uh, let's go scroll through some of the harmonies that are available here from six below on up. This is six below. Fourth below now. The cellist just got fired. You don't need him anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> This yeah, really so works with a violin because, you know, yeah. normally there's a couple of you guys there anyway doing yeah. harmonies. That really and sounds symphonic. And a very consistent signal like the standard of violin actually works with the pitch shifter a little better than something that kind of uh, warbles dynamic-wise yeah. and pitch-wise like a, like a guitar string. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. Right? So, hey, yeah. you can get the more money that you don't have to hire another a cellist and another violinist, That's right, for true. your weddings and... Uh, other gigs. <laughs> now, one of the cool features on the new TC uh, V2s for the Hall of Fame, the uh, flashback, and the quintessence is that mash button, which is like a, uh, you put pressure on it when it's on, and it, you can assign it to do this or that. In this case, it goes up to the next interval in the pitch shifting. So, should we hear that? Oh, yeah, let's uh, sustain <laughs> a note, and then we'll. So it'll just go sequentially? So 
hear almost that. Almost like the, the pitch, pitch knob on a keyboard. Yes, exactly. Oh, it just pushes cool. it up. And you could kind of tell with varying pressure, it can kind of float up into it if you want to do like a sort of grace note style if you got the you know, foot control down to slick it up like that. Yeah. So that's a really clever feature. I, I loved it on the Hall of Fame where you could uh, you know, kind of shoot up the modulation or the repeats and make something oscillate. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can uh, program it through the Tone Print app to do whatever you want if you want to go to a different interval instead of sweeping up. However you want to program it. That's really cool. So you can see yourself using something like this on stage. Definitely. I wish I had a whole string section on stage, and I do with this guy. <laughs> right, yeah. Just Maybe up by a, cu myself. a couple of these back-to-back. -back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just <know>. stacked. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just stacked. You got your yeah. third, your fifth. There yeah, you go. just all in a row. Yep. Why not? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's see. I like violin with drive. We were testing it out earlier, right? Yeah. So do you ever use much distortion drive ever on anything you've done so far? Not live. If I'm doing something solo, I will. But usually I'm playing with other guitar players. So I'm like, all right, you can sound like the guitar player. <laughs> you like that take care of the game. Who needs it, right? <laughs> but well, I love it. It's a lot of fun. Right, so the push damp sound, I mean, especially when you do something like on the rock side of stuff, kind of would be cool to hear, like, say, yeah. a uh, lead guitar sound that's much, much more singing than what a guitar can do. Yeah. So let's see what it, like, uh, pushing the amp sounds like in this case. the fifth yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah who needs tony iomi we got no violin mm -hmm. that's covered <laughs> that's i think i just said blasphemy too i'm gonna get like pegged in the head by a metal head when i, yes, as soon as yes. I step outside <laughs> these doors as if we would don't get enough trolls on this show. Yeah, pretty you know, much. You don't yeah, have to just, invite uh, them into their home. Yeah, I just I just took another shovel to the hole we're digging, pretty much. But oh well, say la vie. <laughs> so uh, one of the, this sparkle drive has been a popular one for a while, and one of the things that has kept it around is this clean blend here. Uh, when I had it, uh, you testing it before, that's just distortion. <laughs> So you can uh, blend in your clean tone, so you still uh, get some of the just natural, in your case, the ring and sustain of a violin. Yeah. So uh, would that have, would that make some, would that make uh, drive more appealing to you that you can blend, you can control the blend of uh, yeah. distorted and dry? Yeah. Because yeah? some times the distorted is like a little too much, and you lose the overall sound of the instrument. Mm -hmm. and it's nice to kind of have that, yeah. that mix. So when you do your solo Aussie Black <laughs> Sabbath show, you'll be able to still get your natural sound through yeah. a nice uh, mid-hum style I overdrive there. Yeah, I still know it's me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to expand our pedal board. This is going to... Yeah, you're going to need a bigger here. laptop bag. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so have you ever messed with the fuzz much on any of, the, on any of your... Uh... I don't think I have. No? It's good right, fuzzy. Dom. Well, we're going to introduce you to the gray stash by our friends from New Jersey, yeah. Fuzz Rocious. I like the mustache on there. Right, right. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> it's uh, your uh, take on the Big Muff circuit with volume, tone, a mids, and a sustain, which is your fuzz. So if you want scooped mids, you want boosted mids so it cuts, uh, well, it's available to you right here. Let's hear your clean tone again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Electric violins, Eric, I have piezo pickups, right, generally? Yes, yeah, so there's it's a little pickups, bit of, there's piezos, yeah. That's a piezo, I assume? I think so. So that that's probably different the way it'll interact with a, with a pickup through, through a distortion effect the way it would through a magnetic pickup with a coil and a guitar. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more uh, brute force, I think, yeah. sort of with, a, with your usual guitar pickup, and I really have not run many piezo <laughs> instruments through fuzz so this is an experiment <laughs> for me and I'm experiment. liking it <laughs> I like sharp articulate stuff so this is definitely cutting it yeah let's yeah. hear it that's where, where I'm liking the distortion stuff is on, on the lower notes much more yeah harmonics that pop out yeah. it's rich sounding yeah. it is pretty awesome it's a different beast from a guitar obviously like you don't you know you can just do sustain with with bowing where on the guitar yeah. a lot of your sustain will come from from, from the, the overdrive yeah. and in fact that's you know they, the old big must labeled sustain everyone wondered why you know mm-hmm. but same on here it is the fuzz and fuzz on top of sustain is a beautiful beautiful <laughs> sound i'm digging it <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh when i run through my amp I, like, just what do you use for uh, for an amplifier? Uh, I just pull mini Fender amp right now. Okay. Really? So you don't go for anything specialized? You just go through like uh, just a Fender Deluxe or Twin? Yeah. Um, I played through a Vox and an Orange, and I really like that. Oh, and nice. Yeah, Marshall sound. Stacks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like an amp and a pedal. This is cool. I, I really... I really want to hear that through a 4 by 12 with this fuzz. Oh that would be monstrous. I can arrange for <laughs> Yeah? It. Yes. So yeah, wait. Good. We do have we do a have a, a uh, cab simulation on our Behringer Ultra. Oh. Which one do we have? The Ultra GDI. So you can kind of simulate it here. Uh, let's try it. So this is without it. And just And now with the cab. A little bit more, a slight bump in the low. Oh, actually, yeah, with the distortion, it makes a big difference. So this is without it. And now with it. That sounds a lot more like a guitar. Yeah, a little bit more focused, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Which, uh, let those, if you, for those who might not know at home, uh, a lot of the DIs will nowadays have cab sims, which usually will imitate a... Usually it's this 12, is a four by twelve. Yeah, I they're think. usually four by twelves or two by twelves. Some of them have, uh, I've seen with four by ten sims, but it always adds that extra girth, that extra power underneath, and it definitely worked with a violin and the sustain. <laughs> yes, sounded awesome. Thank you. you want to just keep that on? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Keep it rolling. Now, do you ever go chorus flange modulation? Anything uh, outside a studio? No. Uh-uh. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Uh-uh. I wanted to bring that seventies. Uh, uh, fat sounding uh, phaser style. Okay. So it's now, our... we've had this pedal on the show before for guitar, right? Uh, or... I, I think we have had uh, other source audio pedals before. Uh, I don't know if we've had the lunar phaser here. Uh, what's cool about these stereo in, stereo out, but they also have a Nero app, which opens up a lot more control uh, through your iPhone, and it comes with this cable that takes it. Uh, from your iPhone right into there and open up the app and you can even change that to the chorus if you wanted to. Nice. So I got to hand it to Source Audio. They have come up with some really clever ideas and some great sounding effects uh, like this super awesome lush sounding phaser. (laughs) Awesome. So you're dry. We'll just make everything middle. Cool. 
<laughs> subtle but kind of cool sounding. This is the classic mode, which is a four-stage phaser. Uh, they have a univibe sound, and on the other side, the multi is a really sort of uh, cool sounding eight-stage phaser. Let's go with the uh, vibe real quick. I like the univibe sound. Let me try to take this. Took the cab off. I could definitely see this in that prog or psychedelic sort of atmosphere. Yeah. I, I definitely like it. It's, uh, let's see. I feel like it mimics a lot of my vibrato. Yeah, you could save yourself the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> vibrato on vibrato or vibrato. Yeah. Let's see. There's a, a what's it on here? Sine, sawtooth, and square wave. So with it maxed out, so you can really hear it. There we are. Let's go through them. That's sine. It's really vocal. Yeah. There's meow, a square meow. wave. <laughs> meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. That's cool. You can speed up. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so would you see yourself using something like this or kind of like, oh, maybe once in a while, song calls for it and not my go-to sort of thing. I would have thing. to join another prog rock band for yeah? sure, which I have no <laughs> objection to. <laughs> there, yeah, well... Plenty of prog rock, prog rock bands out there need a violinist. Yeah. Please call Melissa Barrison. Barrison. Yes. She'll make you way more progressive than you already are. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we're going to be heading into a commercial here in a little bit, so maybe save the oh sure save rest, the rest out. Couple of these for later. Uh, so far, what's uh, what's one that you like the most? Um, definitely. How I'm reading it upside down. Quite. Oh, quintessence from TC Tessence. Electronic there. Yeah, that one's a lot of fun, and Gray Stash is super Grace fun. Stash. I, I like them all. <laughs> right. and, and now you know my pain. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. He yeah, takes them all back with him at the end of the night, and that's that's the saddest. Not in my house. <laughs> Maybe you could charm some out of him. I'm not as good at it. <laughs> We're gonna well, take care. We'll be back in just a little bit with our with our guest Melissa Barrison. We'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Dimiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. The Moyer Entertainment Group, in conjunction with Adario, Radio Airplay, and Looploft, is keeping music in our local schools and presenting local talent to the world through the Temecula Valley Music Awards. Submissions for entry into the TV 
VMA 2017 season are now open in all genres, including a youth category for artists under 18 for the October 7th Star Studded Awards Show, where 100% of the proceeds go towards supporting local music education in the Temecula Valley. Details, tvmawards.org. Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berezetsky. Do you play guitar at all? Um, a little bit. A little bit. A little yeah. bit, yeah. I have a little Fender Starcaster, not Strat. It's a Starcaster <laughs> from Costco. There you go, right on. So wait, did you start on violin? Did you start elsewhere and then wind up on violin? I started on violin. How old were you? Um, I was eight. Eight. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you gravitated to it yourself, or is it one of the most things where your parents kind of make you? And... Yeah, my mom kind of made me. <laughs> She's friends. Her friends uh, was in the San Jose Symphony. How long oh, okay. did it? How long did it take you to get into it, where you started actually liking? I, I imagine it must have been a chore in the beginning. <laughs> it was pretty hard. I hated it. Yeah, I, yeah, it was the worst. Um, I had private lessons for about six months up in the Bay. That's where I'm originally from. Mm-hmm. And then okay. when I moved down to San Diego, I was six months ahead of everybody. So naturally, as a violinist, we like to be better than everybody and <laughs> have the upper hand. So I was like, oh, I like this now because I'm better. Ah, <laughs> so that's yeah. where it started paying off. Yeah. And you did end up majoring in music, correct? And I did, nice. yeah. And you uh, went to down here, Point Lomo, Nazarene, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, you, that's one of, you're one of the few cases where I've heard, like, okay, I'm going to study music, and then it went to playing and recording. That's a very rare thing, it seems. Yeah. But, yeah. wow, 
definitely made a living out of it. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually like so, something I think about all the time. It's, there's this kind of, uh, uh, with, with music instruments, when kids start out playing, the, better, the earlier you start, the better you're going you're gonna to be. But yeah. if you start out early to where you're just forced to do it, it's, it's rough for, for kids. So oh. if you stick with it past a certain age, you will start, start digging it. On the other hand, if you wait, you know, like me, I didn't start playing guitar until I was like in high school because, you know, you're just an angsty teenager <laughs> and you want to play, play, yeah, play guitar. Yeah, greatest, greatest reason is to start, yeah. But, you know, I'll never get to the level where, you know, someone that starts playing an instrument at eight years old is, is going to get to. So it's, it's kind of like a, 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 a weird... I was actually late for my group. Most of my peers at Point Loma started when they were three or four. Oh, really? So I was considered a late bloomer. Mm. So, and and that's why and that's why <laughs> that's why you're playing the devil's music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was raised on Zeppelin and the Doors. And you were an that, a- so. angsty eight year old. I was an angsty eight year old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was that's I was so surprised when we started playing like before the show started. You're you're taking out like. Uh, uh, metal Aussie, riffs, yeah. Aussie, yeah. Aussie, yeah. Drowning Pool, yeah. CDC, yeah, all that stuff. Guns N' Roses. Yep. Yeah. But hey, that's why you're getting paid though and out there actually gigging those because you have that variety under your belt, which uh, i got to admit, I do not have that much of a playing variety under my belt. So, Yeah, that's yeah. always been my goal is to be in any musical situation, reggae, rock, jazz, and mm. just be able to play along. Never heard violin in a reggae tune. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't That's think of one either. Yeah. Cool. I'd like to hear that. Orchestral reggae, actually. No. We're going to just expand on beyond <laughs> that. Why not? Why not? Oh, hold on a second. Let's be the most relaxed conductor ever. i got to hear what this sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, I'm on the spot. There talk to talk. I don't really know I'm going to try this. Let's jump in. Orchestral reggae can orchestral exist in the world. Orchestral reggae. You heard it here first. <laughs> when it's a thing, we just invented it. Up yes. next, dub. <laughs> dub, with, dub with violin. Yeah. Get spacey. Why not? That's a thing, too. You got enough well, toys here to make it happen. Yeah, I was going to say, well, if you're going to get spacey, we need delay and reverb. Yes. So that's our next uh, our next categories right here. I brought the ARP 87 from Walrus Audio. Uh, this has been a popular one that, I got to admit, it took me a little while to get accustomed to. It's uh, four modes with a secret mode, actually. You got a digital, analog, lo-fi, and slapback. Controls for repeats. Uh, let's see. Dampen control, level, ratio, and X, which changes depending which mode you're in. It is modulation for uh, slapback, uh, digital, and analog, and it is the filter in lo-fi. And uh, there's no rate knob. It's all by tap tempo, which is a second switch. So let's hear a little bit of the uh, violin drive first. There we go. There's some of that modulation. Really right. well. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very uh, lush sounding, even on you know, the digital, when it's uh, with the modulation in it, it kind of has a nice uh, shimmery shine to it because of that modulation. It's working very well with that yes. nice long sustain on a violin. Yeah. 
So how often do you kick on the delay that's on yours? Is it used often or is it kind of just when needed basis? Yeah, um, it depends. Again, it depends. Like I said, a lot of the church gigs that I do where I need to sound like just a very spacey, airy guitar, fill up a lot of space, um, I'll, I'll put that. Yeah. That in the action. All right on. Awesome. <laughs> so you do get to have some fun with it on occasion. Oh, yeah. yeah so atmospherics, yeah. of course, makes complete sense. Yes. Now let's uh, roll through some of the other modes. I had you an analog here. Does that thing do backwards? Yeah, I feel like it should go backwards. Too. Right, yeah, that's like the one mode missing out of here is ah. reverse. I mean, but, it almost sounds reverse with how yeah. how spacious it is. Right. It gives that illusion. And you can uh, kind of imitate the attack of one if you take away the high end. So I have the dampening rolled back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the uh, filter, well, this is on the lo-fi right here, so I pull the filter back so it's darker so you don't hear the attack at the beginning of the delay as much. Right. So compared to like say if I crank these two. We can hear the chucks and everything on yeah. the attack. Yeah. The other one kind of stays out of the way more. Yeah, when you take the dampen back mm -hmm. and uh, I mean like. Oh, well. <laughs> I like that. Wait, try it again. Oh, now you got to do Super Mario. through the portal into Mario World must sound like. Yeah. This is what I hear in my head when I'm having a bad trip on trip. Something very, very similar. <laughs> Stabby horror movie violence, no! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so let's uh, try the last. Actually... Since uh, slapback is the Nashville sort of sound, could you give us a little fiddle styling? Ooh. Hmm. So it's kind of got a little doubling effect there, yeah. the way that it is. Yeah. Uh, it's going, you can tell by the rate there, fast as hell. So I notice you're like sliding up into most of the notes when you do it. That's kind of the fiddly thing. Yeah, yeah. a lot of double stops. It's uh, fiddle. I mean, I think guitar players invented fiddle because it's so sloppy. It's yeah. accurate, but it's, it's, it's a guitar player that picked up a violin. And yeah. I, I hear that a lot in you know stuff like maybe Almond Brothers or or Leonard Skinner. Like sometimes, like I close my eyes and I just picture a fiddle. It might as well be. Yeah. Definitely. I could see that, yeah. Especially some of the slide players with that uh, attack into it. I could mm -hmm. definitely see that. They actually don't get too close. Guitar nah. players play great violin. <laughs> great fiddle players. I do not, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do on a fretless neck as much as I'd like to. Yeah. I, I've tried to pick up a violin a couple of times. All I can do is make horrendous, horrendous noises. That's <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> I, I'll probably sound like you did at eight years old when you, <laughs> when you just picked it up. Oh, there. No, that's way better. That's there way better than what I can do. That's what I sound like on guitar, actually. So that's. Yeah. that's oh, man. Let's. Now, like any good video game, there's some secrets hidden, right? Ooh. So a lot of people have talked about this one. So let's see if I can get this to work just right. There is a hidden uh, algorithm. It's like the secret menu at In and Out. Yeah, can I get that uh, delay animal style? Extra veggies. <laughs> what does extra veggies get you? 
I don't know that one. A lot of filler. Extra lettuce and tomato. <laughs> oh. Nice. Well, at least we learn a little. Well, I, I, really, I just don't think of those as veggies in a burger. You ever get monkey style? No, what's that? Animal style fries on a burger? No. Uh, monkey style. Wow. Wow. Monkey style. I'm going to learn that. I work right by now. Now I'm going to for lunch. <laughs> you got the inside track here. Mm-hmm. Let's see if it worked. Don't think I got it, no. Do a car. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, sorry, folks, I wasn't able to get the uh, hidden algorithm here, but it is in there. I'm sure you can go on a like Petals it? Reddit or I'll post it up later on uh, Sh- on Sharpen the Axe Facebook. What is it supposed to do? It's another another flavor of reverb, another mm-hmm. mode, but I uh, cannot quite recall the exact Cobra code, or what was that code to get it out of there. So. For those Contra- who like yeah, a challenge. You. Contra code. <laughs> thank you, Cedric. But uh, one more in the chain here, some reverb. Yes. And right here, this one's been a definitely been a hit. Is the MXR Studio Reverb, just nice and simple. Decay mix tone, which also allows you to go through each of the uh, reverbs there, and six modes. Six. So you don't need no studio engineer. You don't need to rely on okay. your front of house guy. That's yes. All your reverbs. We'll start with the plate. <laughs> That burger is called Panther Style. Yeah. <laughs> Panther Style. That burger right there, that's Panther Style. Yes. <laughs> Let's try the spring reverb next, much like your beloved Fender amps, okay. right? Okay. Did you tap on the knob to activate that? Yeah. It, yeah, the tone knob you push down to scroll through each of the modes. Wow. Wow, so, that's fancy. Right, yeah. MXR uh, making it nice and easy. They don't have to get a bigger box with another switch to go through. It's just, yeah, just tap yeah. the top of the tone. This is already a button. Let's do something else with it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Why waste space? That's that's actually a great sounding spring reverb, though. I like I, it. It's right? Fun. Especially when it's on the brighter side. Any preference, like for kind of reverb, uh, like on the Hall of Fame? I think it's just a, sort of like a arena style ride or room style on there. Yeah, you just crank the. Well, I have the mini one, so. All right, on nice. So it's the, the easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just like more reverb, less reverb. <laughs> nice and easy, right? Why complicate things? Yeah. Uh, your preference? Do you have any preferred kind of reverb? Uh, I think I gravitate towards spring usually. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I, I learned to love spring reverb because of uh, Paul and Dan from Interpol. Though that. Thick, mm. thick, strong sound of uh, fen- cranked as hell Fender amps and Interpol's albums made wow. me love the spring reverb sound. And I already hear like the old timers yelling at me through the computer screens of "What about Dick Dale and others?" <laughs> but I'm oh, sorry, guys, it was Interpol for me. <laughs> wow. I had to wait like 70 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to be yelling at some screen that's not even there at some young whippersnappers talking about gear or music. I already do, <laughs> really, my, to be honest. My day. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's go with Epic Reverb because Epic. It's got some modulation in there. It sounds like a blend of reverbs, which I think actually is what that epic is. And, you know, you want something to sing David Gilmore like. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's a great choice right there. Yeah. In fact, let's add some of that Fuzz Rocious onto it. There we go.
Definitely very, very cool sounding. Try, I would... try this Parco drive with it. Oh, yeah. And I turned on the cab. There we are. It's thick. That's, that's nice. cool. Nice. I like yeah, I like that a lot. I had a uh, not quite ignore, but I hadn't jumped to the MXR uh, Studio Reverb here uh, in my choice, just testing stuff out. But I need to revisit this one a bit. It's quite nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. And we still got three more uh, types to go here, right? Yeah, it's a lot they pack into one little compact yeah. box. I'm already happy with the first. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps on There's a going. More? You don't There's know what happiness more. is yet. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> until you've tried modulated reverb. <laughs> It's, it's like the church guys actually now since you were mentioning it earlier love the modulated reverb just a nice long decay on it and let it sing with their uh, transparent overdrives yeah take me to church <laughs> a mournful sound over the plains <laughs> Is definitely pretty awesome sounding. Uh, Paul, would you find yourself using this on guitar? How are yeah, you digging this one I really, right here? I really dig that. I, I don't. I'm not too happy with uh, my reverb on my on my amp that I normally use. It just kind of put it in for a little bit of wetness, but it's kind of. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. The, the Mesa boogie is a little. I th I think it'll probably. It's. I think it's part of like the the whole uh, gain structure. So like if I had. The, the opportunity to crank that amp way up, I think the reverb would be more present, but it t tends to kind of like really sit in the back somewhere. Yeah, uh, the sometimes the Mesa Boogie reverbs can be funny like that. Like I love the the triple crown head, but the reverb on it, I'm, I'm learning how to I, get with. I, I suspect that's it was done intentionally to keep keep your tone kind of like pristine and focused without get, making it all wishy-washy with a bunch of reverb. Yeah, trying to soak, not trying to soak it up. Yeah, yeah, so it's really good for that where it won't get in the way of, of your tone at all. Uh, but it's hard to get that really, really, you know, lush, spacey thing with it. And especially with a, uh, with a pedal, like say for the spring, it can be easier because actually, at, well, as I mentioned before, Interpol, I, they are using a Maleco spring chicken reverb because... Some stages will shake so much at the volume that they're playing at oh. that it can affect the reverb and it can really wash over when you don't mm. want it to. Wow. So if I had a nice deluxe or a twin with that fender in there, I'd try to even pad it underneath if I really wanted the reverb in there like a Dick Dale style or something like mm. that because I don't want it to uh, completely take over. But when you got control like this, and you like control, correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, we need to trust the sound guy. sound guys. <laughs> Well, you got a couple more in here for flavor. Hi. Now, let's see how you think of this room compared to your Hall of Fame. <laughs> I like this. There's a lot of clarity in it. So in a lot more clarity compared to your Hall of Fame? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So you're liking it a little bit better? It's a little crisper and um, defined. Nice. Okay. Right on. So somewhere, MXR or, or TC Electronic. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One more on here, the pad, which is uh, octave above and below, I believe. What? So you got a pog and reverb in one for you. Oh, mm. man. I can get rid of two pedals already. Right? <laughs> Make room for the sparkle. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's super cool. It's got some modulation in there. I love how thick this one sounds. Yeah. I like it a lot. Nice. It's very synth based, and I, I mean, now you can, who needs a Moog or a uh, Roland? You can do just some 
like synth string style stuff just on your own, just with oh, that one right that. there, right? Yeah. 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 Hire people, not synth players. <laughs> <laughs> So for all the stuff that we've gone through today, and uh, again, thank you very much for joining us thank and playing uh, playing through our pedals for you. It's been fun. I wish I could take you guys everywhere all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything jumped out, stood out to you that made you go, oh, wait, that? I need more pedals. <laughs> yeah, in general. <laughs> right yeah. on. You can always come down to Pitbull Audio where you can find all of these right here. They're for sale if you're a guitar player, violin player, bass player. Yeah. Anything we can do to help you out. Uh, you can get the quintessence for, uh, let's see. Well, I have to look at my notes. Hopefully, I can't remember everything. Hopefully we, we've ruined some like 12-year-old classical players right now that had no idea that you could do <laughs> that this. That was the goal. There's going to be a sudden influx of string players. Come and to the dark bands. side. Yeah. <laughs> and you can uh, get your prog set up going. It's $149.99 for this guy right here. $129.99 for this. $145 for the gray stash. For the Lunar, it's $149. It is $199 for the ARP 87 and $199.99 for the MXR Reverb. So none of them terribly, terribly overpriced compared to the boutique market. Mm. And get your money's worth. These are all great builders right here. Yeah. But uh, th again, thank you very much for joining us. Now, if someone wants to hire you for studio work, session, stage, weddings, whatever, where can they find you? Uh, MelissaBarrison.com. That's right on. Yeah. And uh, any upcoming gigs in San Diego that those in the local area can come see you at? Um, I'm actually at Java Joe's tomorrow night with Lee Coulter. And um, then I'm off to Nashville for a Java while. Java Joe's in Encinitas? Where's Java Joe's? I don't know. It will be my first time playing there. Oh, no, I'm thinking Java Hut. But I don't it, remember where Java Joe's <laughs> is. But it's definitely on my calendar on my website, so you can check that out. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that fun stuff, too. So. Right on. So on any social media platform, find Melissa Barrison. Hire her out. She is a <laughs> badass violin player, as you heard. <laughs> and hopefully you'll join us again sometime on here. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank cool. you, guys. Let's jam it out. Right? Might as well. Hit it. <laughs> uh, oh, ha! <laughs> <laughs> and false start. <laughs> You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR...